<laughs> All right. So uh, finishing chapter four, you had your tests. Uh, last day, I haven't looked at them, but I will um, because there were two tests before yours, so I have to do them in order. Uh, okay, so 4.4, we'll just get right into it, is on the laws of logarithms, which we can also call log laws, which is kind of fun to say. So log laws, if we're trying to solve for some x, right, it's, it's going to be useful to be able to expand a logarithmic equation or combine a, a logarithmic equation. So uh, when solving for x, when solving for x, it will be useful to be able to combine or expand, to be able to combine or expand logarithmic equations. Okay. So in your handout, do, 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 where is it? Here. We've got these three log laws. The third one we've actually seen already. Right? So we have already seen, we have already seen, seen slash used the third law, which says that, okay, well, if I have something in the power, so if I have x in the power, for example, then I can bring it downstairs by taking the log of both sides. And so something like uh, we had, now I'm doubting myself. Uh, oh yeah. It was in the form of log base a of a to the power of x is equal to x, right? So previously we've seen this. But all that's doing is it's taking the log of a of a to the x and what this law is saying that if you have something in the power, you can bring it downstairs and technically what's going on here is that you have x times the log of a of a, but the log of a of a, log base a of a, I should say, is just one, right? Because a to the power of what equals a, a to the power of one equals one. Right? So we've already used this kind of behind the scenes, right? But what's really nice is that we can take the power and bring it down. So for example, example, if you have something like, um, like three to the power of X, and you want to solve for X, then use log law number three. Confusing because I use three as the base, but they're different, obviously. And take the log of both sides. Maybe I'll do that. And take the log, any base. So I usually use the, the natural log unless, unless so I would use log base three. I don't have to use log base three. It works for any log, right? The log base A of A to the power of C is C times the log base A of capital A, where lowercase a and capital A are different. Um, so uh, if I can use any base, I usually use 
the natural log. So I usually use the natural log. Okay. So if I have three to the x is equal to, uh, let's say is equal to four, that'll be easier. How else would I solve for x? Is equal to four. So then if I can use the log of any base, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I have the ln of three to the x is the ln of four. But by the log laws, this can be brought down and it'll be equivalent. And that's how I'm going to solve for the x. Right, so I get x times the ln of 3 is the ln of 4. Okay. Solving for x, all I have to do is divide both sides by the ln of 3. And so x is going to be the ln of 4 divided by the ln of 3. Okay. So I skipped straight to the third log law. But the two other convenient logs, log laws, uh, is law number one, which says that if we're multiplying inside, then to split the insides up, we can add the logs of the same base, right? Log base A, log base A, log base A. Okay, that's gonna be important. Log base A of A over B, well now because I'm dividing, right, then I have the log base a of A minus the log of A, log base A of B, right? And so if I'm dividing here, it becomes subtraction. It only works for multiplying and dividing or adding or subtracting, depending on if you're expanding, right? Going to, from the left to the right or combining going from the right to the left, okay? One thing I want you to notice, and so I'm going to steal these log laws here, laws one and two. <clears throat> so if you want to uh, expand, then you go from the left to the right. Right, so here I'm making this bigger, so I'm expanding going from the left to the right. And if I want to combine, then I move from the right to the left, right? So it just depends on if I want to expand or if I want to combine these terms. One thing I want you to notice is that, okay, A over B, we know from exponent laws, so notice, that the log of A over B is the same as the log of A times B to the negative one, right? B in the denominator is really B to the one, and then to bump it down into the fraction, well, that's B to the negative one, okay? So now, I'm multiplying a and b to the negative one. So what I can do is this becomes the log of a plus the log of b to the negative one by law number one, okay? But by law number three, I can bring this negative one down in front, so plus negative one times the log of b, which is where we get that uh, subtraction from, which is the log of a plus negative one times the log of b. And this is from law number three, which we already talked about, right? So you don't need to remember two logs. You could just uh, remember both of uh, the first one and then the second one would follow. But it's usually easier if you just remember the second law as well. So, um, <clears throat> log A minus the log of B. Okay. 
okay. which is law number two. Okay. So they're all related, of course. Okay. And we just need to memorize these three laws, right? We need to memorize, well, definitely the first one. You can figure out the second one from the first one, right? And the laws of exponents. And uh, as long as you remember that you can bring the power downstairs or you can bring the, uh, the multiplier, the coefficient back up top, right? So we need to be able to move back and forth between these. So let's do a, a couple of practice ones. <clears throat> Um, I wanted to talk about the change of base before we do any practice, just so we have all the material uh, in our minds. The change of base formula, depending on which calculator you're using, right, especially if you're using, uh, you know, your phone or just a basic calculator, you're probably only going to have a log and an LN button, okay? So what I'll say here is that most calculators only have log, which is log base 10, and ln, which is log base e, buttons. Okay. To calculate something like the log base three of five, right, we need some way to do that. So to calculate uh, the log base three of five, we need the change of base formula. The change of base formula, which looks like this. Okay. One thing to notice, right? So here I've got the log base B, so any base B of X. So in our case, our B is gonna be three and our X is gonna be five. Okay. Notice that uh, log base A and log base A is different from this log base B, right? This B actually translated to the denominator as long as I use the same log base A, it doesn't matter which one I choose. In fact, because I only have the natural, sorry, the common log and the natural log on my calculator, I should pick one of those two. Okay. Oops. Use log a is equal to log base 10 or log base e since those are the buttons we have since those are the buttons we have okay i will always use the ln the natural log okay. I will always use ln, but you can use the common log, log base 10 if you prefer. Okay. So for our little example, log base 3 of 5. So the log base 3 of 5 is going to be, okay, my b is 3, my x is 5. So I have the ln of 5 divided by the ln of three. I'll put brackets around there. Notice that this three is here and this five is here. Okay. Let's do a couple, just so we have it under control. Let's do uh, 63. We've got the log base seven of 2.61. 
Well, I will say that there are calculators that have the special log base anything button, right? So, and I'll try to see if I can. Uh, so on here, it looks like the log base anything of whatever I want. Okay, so there are calculators that can just do it, um, but most calculators don't, okay? So it just get to know your calculator a little bit and see if you even need the change of base formula. But all we do is we write this as the natural log of 2.61. I don't know why I wrote the natural log like that. I usually just do this. Divided by the natural log of seven, right? Those I can use on my calculator and you should find that you get the ln of 2.61 divided, oops, <laughs> deleted it. 2.61 divided by the ln of seven, I get an approximation of 0.49300084885. So this would be our exact answer this would be our approximate answer, right? So even though the exact answer looks a little bit nasty, right, with the LNs, but uh, this is only an approximate answer. Let's do 66, just till we get the hang of it. Log base 12 of 2.5. Well, I take the 2.5 in the numerator and the 12 in the denominator. So I have the ln of 2.5 over the ln of 12, which if I do the approximation here, the ln of 2.5 divided by the ln of 12, roughly 0 0.36874251678. Okay, so the change of base formula, it's, it's good to recognize, right? So if you see something like this, just remember that you could rewrite it as a single log, right? But it's not going to be the log of 2.5 divided by 12. No, 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 right? Uh, we have to rewrite it as a single log, right? So sometimes we can, if we're trying to contract things, then we could rewrite this as this, right? So you can go either direction. All right, let's do some, some work kind of uh, expanding. I think we start with, yeah, we're expanding and then we're gonna combine logarithmic functions. So we do a combination of uh, the three logs or three log laws, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, so I want to start with something like 26. I have the log base 5 of 4st. Okay. Notice that I'm just multiplying in here, right? And it goes for, so we looked at uh, the log laws in terms of just two values, but of course you can just keep going, right? A times B times C times D is gonna be the log of A plus the log of B plus the log of C plus the log of D, right? You can do a combination of uh, multiplying and dividing, right? You can incorporate powers. So let's see what that looks like. So we've got the log base five of four ST. Well, that's gonna be Put it down here. The log base five, notice log base five, we have to keep the log base five for each of these, right? But we just get to a four plus the log base five of S plus the log base five of T, right? And I'll just make a note here that we're multiplying. Okay. 
what if we have something like uh, 36? I've got the log base 2 of s to the power of 5 divided by 7t to the power of 2. This s looks like a 5, so I'm just going to try there. Okay. Just keeping an eye on things, right? I'm going to, I have division. I have powers. I have two powers. And I also have multiplication in here. So this thing's going to expand quite a bit, right? And we just need to pick away at the log laws until there's nothing left, right? Until there's uh, usually only one thing inside the log. Okay. So I'm going to start with the division. So I'm going to break it up and say that this is the same as the log base 2 of s to the 5 minus the log base 2 of 7t squared. And this is an s. Okay. Here I've got a power. Here I've got multiplication and a power. I'm going to deal with the multiplication here first. Okay, so I'm going to make a note here. I've got a power, and here I've got multiplication. Notice that uh, this negative is in front of all of this, right? So I'm going to use big square brackets to keep them separate. So this becomes the log, five times the log, right? Bringing that power downstairs log base 2 of s minus, and then big square brackets, the log base 2 of 7 plus, because I'm multiplying, right, but then I bring that negative inside when I expand it out, uh, times the, or plus the log base 2 of t squared. Okay. This is going to expand inside the brackets, right? And I've also got a power here. There's nothing more I can do here. I've got the log base 2 of s, even though mis's look like fives, but just be careful. Um, so the log base 2 of s, I'm done. But now, just to do it, finish it here, I've got 5 log base 2 of s minus the log base 2 of 7 minus 2 times the log base 2 of t. And now I'm expanded. Okay. So you have to do multiple, multiple steps typically, right? And keeping in mind just exponent laws. Uh, so something like the third root of x squared plus 4, right? x squared plus 4, the third root of that is the same as x squared plus 4 to the power of 1 over 3. Right, so now I've got a power inside. Uh, in fact, I want to do one, but maybe one that's a little bit, no, let's do 42. Now that I've said it, 42. I want to take the log, when there's no base, it's base 10, right, the common log. Log of the third root of x squared plus 4 is the same as the log of x squared plus 4 to the 1 over 3, right? So often we'll have to rewrite our square roots as powers because now I've got this power that I can deal with, which is essentially law 3, right? So this becomes 1 over 3 times the log of x squared plus 4. We have to be careful, right? Because x squared plus 4, there's actually no multiplying or dividing in there. That's the only time that we can expand it. And so here we're done. Okay. Okay. Let's do 47 because it's big and nasty, right? Uh, but the, the procedure is going to be the same, right? We can rewrite the square root as if it's a power. Um, 
You could also use exponent laws to say, okay, well, I can bring that power of one half onto each of these terms because I'm multiplying and dividing. I'm not gonna do that, but, um, but you could. 47, I'll just make a note here. There are uh, a couple of ways, a couple of ways to solve this. but the results will be the same. So I'm just gonna show you one way and then you can try it out and see if you can figure out the other way. Uh, but the results will be the same. Okay. So 47, I've got the log, so the common log of the square root of x squared plus four over bracket x squared plus one times x to the three minus seven squared, all under the square root. Same procedure as we did here, right? I'm gonna rewrite everything under the square root as to the power of one over two in this case. So this becomes the log of x squared plus 4 over x squared plus 1 times x to the 3 minus 7 to the power of 2 to the 1 half. Oops. Okay, so now I've got this power If I just treat everything inside the brackets or under the square root as one thing, I can just bring down the power in front, but then remember that one half is multiplying everything inside. Right? So now I'm gonna make some room here. I get one half times the log of x squared plus four divided by x squared plus one times x to the three minus seven squared. So now, just keep in mind this one half is multiplying everything. So now I've got something divided by something else, and then I've got multiplication in there as well as a power, but I just need to pick away at this slowly, right? And so here I've got division. That's law number two, right? And so I get one half multiplied, so it's all multiplied by the log of x squared plus four minus the log of everything in the denominator x squared plus one times x to the three minus seven squared and square bracket. You know what, because I'm gonna need more room, I'm gonna move this over a little bit so I don't keep bumping out my equal sign. Okay, there's nothing I can do here, right? The only thing I can do is I can expand this one half inside, but I'm gonna wait until the very end to do that. So there's nothing I can do, I'll leave it alone. Now I'm gonna focus on the x squared plus one times x to the three minus seven squared, okay? so. I've got multiplication in here. So I have one half times the log of x squared plus four minus, and I'm gonna put it in brackets just like we did earlier with the same scenario, right? If I have a minus out here, I have to put brackets because this minus is subtracting everything in here. So now I have to do minus the log of x squared plus one plus the log of x to the three minus seven squared. And uh, round bracket and square bracket. Now I'm going to expand this in expand that negative, and I've got a power here. 
very similar to the problem we started with. It's just way bigger now, right? Um, so we have, and I've got room, so I'll bump it down a little bit. In fact, I might move all this down one, just to make it a little bit easier to read. So I have one half times the log of x squared plus four minus the log of x squared plus one minus, doing two things here, two times the log of x to the three minus seven and square bracket, right? I expanded this negative inside the round brackets and I brought this power downstairs in the same step, negative two or minus two log x to the three minus seven. Now I can expand this inside and I'll show that. I usually don't do it until the very end. You can do it at any point, but then you would have to keep track. Okay, then you've got minus one half, which you would have to expand in. Uh, it doesn't matter. So I get one half times the log of x squared plus four minus one half times the log of x squared plus one minus two, oops, sorry, minus, I'll do one half times two times the log of x to the three minus seven. Two divided by two, of course, is just one. And so we get, finally, one half times the log of x squared plus four minus one half times the log of x squared plus one minus the log of x to the three minus seven. That's expanded completely. <clears throat> what if we have to move the other way? Right? We use the same laws, but we, we reverse them. So we have to do, I, I encourage you to do all the practice problems on this page because uh, you need to be really, really good at moving between uh, expanding, combining logarithmic terms. So let's see here. So now we're going to combine logarithmic terms. So we'll use the laws of logarithms to combine the expression. So just having a little glance here, I've got two, which I can bring upstairs, right? The opposite would be bringing it downstairs. So now I'm bringing it upstairs and I've got adding, I'm adding log base four. Um, so let's just do it here. 49, I should have picked a harder one, log base four of six, but I was just showing you to begin with, doesn't matter, plus two times the log base four of seven. First thing you're gonna check is, do I have the same base? Yes, I do. So I can combine these, okay? But first, I'm gonna bring this upstairs. So I get the log base four of six plus the log base four of seven to the power of two. Yeah. So we have the same base. So I'm allowed to combine these. Adding means that I'm going to be multiplying inside. So this becomes log base four of six times seven to the power of two, which is 49. Six, but you can just leave it as seven to the power of two if you want. <clears throat> six times 49 is 294. So this is log base four of 294. <clears throat> this is as combined as we can get, right? Log base four of 294. If we had to calculate it, right? To calculate log base four of 294, 
we use the change of base formula. This is the ln of 294 divided by the ln of 4. Right. Use the change of base. So this is as combined as we can get it, right? In fact, if you're trying to combine this, that's more combined than this one here. I'm not expecting you to go between these two, but sometimes uh, in your work, it'll be easier to write it one way or the other, and it totally depends on what you're working on. All right, let's do one that's a little bit harder here. Uh, let's do 52. Fifty-two, we have three times the ln of two plus two times the ln of x minus one half times the ln of x plus four. Okay. Seeing a couple of things. First off, I have the ln of all the same bases, so that's a good thing, right? I also have some powers that I can bring upstairs. In fact, that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this upstairs, bring it upstairs. I've got a couple of options, okay? I can bring the whole minus one half upstairs, right? Then I have x plus four to the power of negative one over four, one half, which is one over the square root of x plus four. That's one option. Or I can just bring up the one half and then subtract. Notice that we get to the same point anyways. And so what I'll do is I'll just bring the one half upstairs. Okay. So this becomes the ln of two to the power of three plus the ln of x to the power of two minus the ln of x plus 4 to the 1 half. Okay. One of the options. Either way, you'll end up at the same location, so uh, just kind of get comfortable with working with these laws. 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So, and then x squared, and then x plus 4 to the 1 half, but that's being subtracted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these first, and then I'm going to subtract. It doesn't actually matter which way you do it, which you'll find if you do enough of them. ln of 8x squared minus the ln of x plus 4 to the 1 half. Or you know what? I'm going to write it as the root of x plus 4. So now because I'm subtracting, right, so here this became this, and now because I'm subtracting I get the ln of 8x squared divided by the root of x plus 4. Now, that's as combined as I think I can get this thing. I don't think I can cancel anything in here. Um, I don't see anything that I can do to simplify inside, so I'm done. Okay. So, In the next section, 4.5, which is our last section in chapter four, we're gonna learn how to solve for x. Maybe not something as complicated as this, although we can. Um, but if we have something where we wanna solve for x, okay, there's no x here, uh, but maybe we have something like this and we wanna solve for x, we'll be able to do that. So that's in this 
exponential and logarithmic equations. Exponential and logarithmic equations. Okay. So we often have to solve for x in the power, right? Or for x inside a log. Okay. So uh, I don't know why I changed colors. We often need to solve for x when it is in a power. That's an exponential function. Or when it's inside a, a log or when it is inside a log, which is a logarithmic function. Okay. <clears throat> Either way, what you do is you isolate the exponential or the logarithmic function. So isolate x. Sometimes we have to combine logs to make it easier to isolate x. Uh, and then we undo it. So we undo an exponential function with a log or we undo a log with an exponential function. So we'll start and talk about exponential functions, but really usually we're more concerned with the logs now that we know how to deal with powers and how to bring them down, right? So exponential functions, we're gonna isolate the exponential expression on one side of the equation, and then we take the log of both sides, and then we use the laws of logarithms, so bringing that power downstairs, uh, and then you can solve for x. Right? So let's have a look at some problems here. <clears throat> Let's do something like uh, 14. So if we have to solve for x, if we've got e to the point 4x equals 8, okay? e to the point 4x equals 8. I've got this x and I have to solve for x. Okay. I know that if I take the natural log of e, that becomes 1, right? But I'm also able to bring this downstairs. So sometimes, sometimes I pick a convenient log, like the log base e with the same base so they cancel out. Or sometimes I'll just use the natural log because it's easier. That is going to be something that you're going to need to work on, right? Figure out what you prefer to do. So uh, I'm going to take the natural log here because it is log base e and I have a, an exponent base e, but I have to do it to both sides. So I'm going to take the, the natural log of e to the point 4x is the natural log of 8. By the log laws, this point 4x gets brought downstairs. So we need 0.4x times the log of e is the log of 8. The log of e is equal to 1, right? Remember the, the definition of a log is ln is the log base e. So it says e to the power of what equals e? e to the power of 1 equals e. So that's why we use the, the same base, right? It's because it, it'll cancel and go to one. So then we have 0.4x is the ln of eight. Now, remembering that ln of eight is just a number, we can divide both sides by 0.4. So we get x is the ln of eight divided by 0.4. 
Da -da. Okay, this is the exact answer, ln of 8 over 0.4. If I want the approximate answer, I can just use my calculator. And so x is roughly equal to the ln of 8 divided by 0.4. 5.19860385 to however many decimal places they've asked for. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let's do let's do 16. Okay, but before we do um, to bring down a power in the exponent, to bring down a power, or sorry, oh yeah, to bring down a power from the exponent, from the exponential function, we can use the log of any base. Okay. So I'll often use the ln, right? So I will often use ln. Okay. However, uh, recall that the log base a of a to the power of x is equal to x, right? So sometimes I pick the log base a, whatever, depending on what the base is here, because then it just goes away, just like it did up here, right? The natural log of e goes to 1. So that's the idea that I'm saying here. But in 16, what I'm going to use is I'm just going to use ln, even though I should be using a, a base 3, log base 3, if I wanted them to cancel. But I don't have to. Uh, the logs apply to any base, the log laws. So let's do 16 here. 16 is a little bit funny. 3 to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ln of both sides. I'll move this to the center a little bit so I can kind of work on both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, even though, uh, you know what? Maybe I'll do them side by side. Let's do both. So then uh, <laughs> move it over. And maybe I'll make a little note here before we start 16. I will show how to solve 16 in two ways. Pick the one, pick the method that you like the best. Pick the method you prefer. It doesn't matter. Like I said, you're going to end up at the same location. So whichever one makes sense to you, right? So option one, option one, use LN, right? Whereas option two, use log base three. Okay, I've got a three here, so that's why I'm using log base three. So I've got three to the two x minus one equals five. Okay, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna work through option one, which is how I usually do it, but then I'll also show you what uh, option two looks like using log base three. Okie dokie. Here we go. Taking the ln of 3 to the 2x minus 1 is the ln of 5. 
everything in the power gets brought downstairs. So this becomes 2x minus 1 times the ln of 3, which is the ln of 5. I'm solving for x, right? And so I'm trying to isolate x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by the ln of 3, moving it over here. So 2x minus 1 is the ln of 5 divided by the ln of 3. This is one of those, we should recognize this as, okay, well, this is the change of base formula, just the other way around, right? So this is log base 3 of 5, okay? Looks a lot like what I'm going to get over here, but that's why they're so similar, and it doesn't matter which one we do. So uh, if I'm solving for x, I have to add 1 to both sides. So I get 2x is the ln of 5 over the ln of 3 minus 1. Oh, sorry, plus 1. Add 1 to both sides. There you go. Itch here. Then I need to divide both sides by 2. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, find a common denominator here. So times the ln of 3 over the ln of 3. So 2x is actually going to be the ln of 5 plus the ln of 3 divided by the ln of 3. Okay. This is going to combine, right? Because I have the log of the same base and I'm adding them. So this is the same as the log of 5 times 3 log of 15, or the natural log of 15. So before I move that 2 over, I'm going to have the, log, uh, the natural log of 15 over the natural log of 3. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And so x is the ln of 15 divided by the ln of 3. And maybe you see it right away, maybe you don't, right? This is a fraction over a fraction, fraction over a fraction. So you're going to flip the 2 over 1 to become 1 over 2. So, or maybe you see it right away. It, if you do, that's great. The ln of 15 over the ln of 3 times 1 over 2. So close, here we go. This is the same as 2 times the ln of 3, right? But 2, okay, I'll write it out here. x is the ln of 15 divided by 2 times the ln of 3. This, if my goal is to combine this into something nice and compact, that's the same as the ln of 3 to the power of 2, right? So I can bring this power upstairs. So I have x is the ln of 15 divided by the ln of 3 to the power of 2, which is just 9. Okay. Notice that this is the change of base formula, log base 9 of 15. But to calculate it, if you don't have a log base 9, well, it doesn't really say 9, does it? There, log base 9 button, of course, then you would have to use this to calculate it. Now let's do the other method. It's going to be very similar. Okay. Let's see if I can... Keep them separated. All right, so I'm going to take the uh, log base 3 of this thing, okay, instead of the natural log. All right, so what happens is I'm going to take the log base 3 of 3 to the 2x minus 1, oops, is the log base 3 of 5. This becomes 2x minus 1 times the log base 3 of 3, 
is the log base three of five. Log base three of three is one. So I have two X minus one is the log base three of five. Now I'm going to solve for X, right? So I get two X is the log base three of five plus one. A little bit nicer, right? So I get X is the log base three of five plus one divided by two. Okay. I guess it, unless you have a log base three button, right? If you can make a log base three, you would have to convert this to the ln of five over the ln of three, okay? Which would put you at the same thing. So, um, To calculate log base three of five, we need the ln of five over the ln of three. Right. So you could do that, but that is exactly the same as here, right? Took us about the same amount of time. Here, if we wanted to, we could expand this. We could find a common denominator. We could flip and switch, uh, flip and multiply, right? A fraction over a fraction. But there are just two methods of getting to the same location here. Okay. If you're ready to calculate here, you could just use the ln of five over the ln of three plus one divided by two and then be done with it. Right? If you're just looking for an approximation. Good, 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 good. So that was 16. Let's have a look here. Uh, which one do I want to do? Mm -hmm. Let's do 28. Twenty-eight is two times five plus three to the x plus one is equal to one hundred. Okay. So if you're trying to solve for x here, then you need to isolate this x. So what you're going to do is you're going to slowly pick away until you just have the exponential function, right? So I'm going to divide both sides by two. Then I'm going to subtract five from both sides until I just have three to the x plus one is equal to something. Okay. So I need to isolate, isolate this. So I get five plus three to the x plus one is 100 divided by two. Okay. So I get three to the X plus one is 50 minus five. So three to the X plus one is 45. Now that I've isolated the exponential function, now I can, I have the same, I have the same problem that we just solved, right? Uh, I can take log base three or the LN, doesn't matter. Because it's easier to use ln on my calculator, I'm just going to go straight for it. And like I said, I usually use the ln. So we're going to take the log of both sides, so the ln of 3 to the x plus 1. Eventually, you can just start writing x plus 1 times the ln of 3. That's fine. Is the ln of 45. I'm just showing that they, uh, the turn of events here. X plus one times the ln of three is the ln of 45. So X plus one times the ln of three, if I divide ln of three by both, on both sides, I get X plus one is the ln of 45 divided by the ln of three. To solve for X, I just have to subtract one. 
x is the ln of 45 over the ln of 3 minus 1. Notice what's nice here is I can calculate this on my calculator. Right? In fact, let's do it. The ln of 45 divided by the ln of 3, then minus 1. X is approximately, so this is your exact answer, right? X is approximately 2.46497352. Okay. To solve logarithmic equations, uh, so I have notes on uh, exponential equations of the quadratic type. I'm going to skip that, so don't worry about that. Uh, but let's do some of these. In fact, I think I can just grab from here. They're pretty similar. So now, right, I'm solving logarithmic equations for x. A lot of the time, I have to use the log laws to combine these things, right, or expand them, depending on, you know, where I want to get my x to. And so let's see here. Let's do, uh, let's do, hmm. let's do 61 together. 61 is 4 minus the log, the common log, because it doesn't say what base it is, base 10. So the log of 3 minus x equals 3. And maybe I'll put it over here so it stays on the same page. <clears throat> okay. Just like exponential functions, hey, did I bring that little blurb in? No, I didn't. That's okay. Wait. <laughs> Come on. It's going to take me a long time to fix. Here we go. Okay. 61. And maybe there's not enough room here. But the to solve logarithmic equations. Hey, it looks like I did copy it in. Let me just check. No, just exponentials. Procedure is the same. We're going to isolate the logarithmic term. So you're going to isolate x sometimes. Right, you might first need to combine the logarithmic terms. That can happen, usually. Uh, write the equation in exponential form. So to get rid of a log, you raise it to the exponent and solve for the variable. So here we're doing 61. 4 minus the log of 3 minus x is 3. So we need to isolate this. Okay, we have four minus and then this log. So what I'm going to do is there are a couple of ways that you could do it. You could add the log of three minus x to the right and then subtract three. I actually think that might be the easiest thing because I don't want to deal with this negative. I could change it to three minus x to the negative one, right? Bring it upstairs. Uh, what else could I do? I could just deal with the negative, right? I could change, so minus four, so negative one, and then drop the negative, log of three minus x equals one. Lots of options, right? So we need to get comfortable with how to work with all those options. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room here. So 
Uh, what I'm going to do, let's just work through it like we would normally. So the negative log of 3 minus x is 3 minus 4. So that means that the negative log of 3 minus x is negative 1. I can divide both sides by negative one, multiply by negative one. It doesn't matter how I get rid of that negative. I can just drop them. That's not really what you're doing. You're multiplying by negative one. So we get log of three minus x is one. This is log base 10. So I'm gonna take 10 to the power of this. 10 to the log of three minus x is 10 to the one. So 3 minus x is 10, okay? Because they have the same base, so these two are gonna cancel or just kind of drop away. Those are, that's a, a log rule. Now I can solve for x, just that any 3 minus x equals 10, that's easy to solve for x, right? And so now I have, uh, <clears throat> negative x is 10 minus 3, and so negative x is negative 7, so x must be 7. Yeah. Mm. Let me just check something real quick here. Uh, let me, let me, let me check. <clears throat> Something happened. Why am I reacting? It's kind of far-fetched, but it's because x equals seven is not in the domain, so it's not a solution. Three minus seven gives me a negative number. So that's why I, I can't have x equals seven. So something happened here. Three minus four, negative, 3 minus x, 10 to 1. Oh. <laughs> 10 minus 3 is not minus 7. Second last. Thank you. Yeah. Took me long enough to get there, right? I'm like, hey, what happened here? OK. So then x is negative 7. Right, so there are no restrictions on the, uh, the domain of an exponential function, so we don't care about checking our x's because we can plug anything into an exponential function. Here, we need to make sure, like, like I did, um, without telling you guys, I checked to see if this was in, uh, was a solution. My answer wasn't, so I knew I'd done it wrong, right? That's why we went back and checked. Thank you. Now we're back on track. Three minus negative seven, that's allowed. And we're good to go. We need to make sure our solution is in the original domain. Right. We can only take the log of a positive number, right? So not zero, not negative. We can only take the log, right? Any base of a positive number. So not zero, not negative. OK. 
can. Let's do one where that's even more important to keep track of. Let's see here. Uh, what if I have 66? Sixty-six. I have the ln of x minus one plus the ln of x plus two is equal to one. Okay. This is one of those scenarios where okay, I've got an x here and an x here, so I need to combine these as one log before I can go ahead and solve this. Right, and so I'm adding logs of the same base, which means I can multiply them inside that log. So I have the ln of x minus 1 times x plus 2 is equal to 1, right? I haven't done anything, I've just combined those logs. Now, I can, I can expand this in here, right? Or I can take e to the power of, of this, right, to cancel the ln, um, doesn't really matter. Let's expand this inside the log. So ln of x squared plus 2x minus x minus 2 is 1. So I get the ln of x squared plus x minus 2 is 1. To shake the x's out of the log, I take whatever the base is here. So this, so for exponents going, uh, I can take any log. For here, if I need to cancel it, I have to take the base, right? I have to raise it to the base. So I get e to the ln of x squared plus x minus 2 is e to the power of 1, right? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. This kind of cancels, and that was the whole point. So now that x squared plus x minus 2 drops down. So I have x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to e, e to the 1 or e. Okay, so remembering that e is just a number, right, uh, it gets a little bit messy but I can subtract e from both sides because remember the whole goal is to solve for x, right? So what can x be here? Well, 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 well. If I subtract e from both sides, I get a quadratic set equal to zero. x squared plus x minus two minus e is equal to zero. This is a, so since this is a, you know what? I better, I better combine the minus two minus e, right? So here, I'm gonna pull out a common negative. And so I get x squared plus e x minus two plus e zero, okay? Treating two plus e as a number, one number, right? Uh, e is 2.7, blah, 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 right? So it's roughly uh, 4.7 here, but you're gonna have to use two plus e as your number. Now I'm gonna say that here, since this is a quadratic, set equal to zero, we can solve for x using the quadratic equation, right, or the quadratic formula. And so that's a trick that we use, right? As soon as you see something that's going to give you an x squared plus something x plus something else, uh, you're going to force it to become a quadratic and then solve for x. So since this is a quadratic set equal to zero, we can solve for x using the quadratic formula. Right, which is x is equal to negative b plus minus the root 
of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Where c in this case is 2 plus e. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one's a little bit nasty, but it, it's okay. We can do it. So we have x squared plus x minus 2 plus e. A is 1, B is 1, and C is negative 2 plus E. Okay. How's this going to work? Oh, let's do it. X is negative 1 plus minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 plus E. Oops. divided by 2 times 1. Okay. I get, now I want to be careful here, right? I get negative 1 plus minus the square root of 1 and then negative 4 times negative, so that's going to be plus 4 times 2 plus e. So plus 4 times 2 plus e. And divided by two. Hopefully I didn't screw something up. I don't remember. I don't think I did this question before. So that's why I don't remember it. I'm hoping. Anyways, we'll see. All right. Uh, so one plus four times two plus E. Okay, hopefully I can get something um, something out of this. If I expand it, so negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 8 plus 4e divided by 2. Negative 1 plus minus the square root of 9 plus 4e uh -oh. divided by 2. What can I do here? Hmm. I guess there's nothing to do but do the approximation. Let me just double check that I didn't muck something up. Because I have the solutions from earlier when I did muck something up. 66. No, we're on the right track. Phew. Okay. There is an E in there. I couldn't remember if I'd already done this question and there was no E in sight or if I am doing a different question. Good, we're safe. So then x is going to be negative 1 plus the root of 9 plus 4e divided by 2. And x is going to be negative 1 minus the root of 9 plus 4e divided by 2. Okay. Do the approximations here. So x is roughly equal to here we go, negative 1 plus the root of 9 plus 4 times e to the 1, if you have to specify, divided by 2, I get roughly 1.72896425, and x is roughly negative 1 minus the root of 9 plus 4 times e to the 1 divided by 2, roughly negative 2.72896425. But we can't have a negative, right? So we need to check which of these x's, right, in the original equation would give us a negative number. So negative 2.7 minus 1 that would give us a negative number, so we can't have it. Negative 2.7 plus 2 is still negative, so that's a no-go, right? So that negative number is not an option. Because I'm subtracting 1, I just want to make sure that the other solution is an option. 1.72 minus 1 is still positive, so that's good. And then, uh, of course, this negative didn't work, like we said. 
uh, we can't take the log of a negative or zero. I should say or zero. So x is roughly negative 2.73 is not in the domain. Therefore, x equals 1.7, or roughly equal to 1.729 uh, is the only solution. So you might have to incorporate uh, the quadratic formula to solve these problems, right? And that's okay. Uh, that was a long one. How about we do uh, 67? 67, I've got the log base five of x plus one minus the log base five of x minus one is equal to two. First thing I'm gonna do, right, I need to solve for x and so, okay, uh, I need to isolate the log or the x, but I need to get them together. Here I'm subtracting logs of the same base, so I can re the, rewrite this as the log base five of x plus one, oops, divided by x minus one is equal to two, right? I'm just rewriting the left-hand side. Now I've got the five here, so a base of five, which means I have to raise it to the power of five in order to get rid of that log, right? But that's how I'm going to uh, get this on its own, x plus one over x minus one. Bump it up so that I can hopefully keep it on the same page. So I get five to the log base five of x plus one over x minus one is equal to five to the power of two, right? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. But the reason I did it is because they cancel. And so I get x plus one divided by x minus one is 25. Now I'm back to something that I know how to solve, right? And so I can multiply this x minus one over here. It's always a good idea to check to see if you can factor something and cancel it that way. If not, you can just multiply the x minus one over. So you get x plus one is 25 times x minus one. So you get x plus one is 25 x minus 25. I'm gonna move this 25x over to the left-hand side and the one over to the right-hand side. So I get x minus 25x is negative 25 minus one. So I get negative 24x is negative 26. So x is negative 26 divided by negative 24 x is 13 over 12. Just double check that it goes in 13 over 12 as long as I'm able to, it's positive, right? So as long as I'm able to subtract one and have a positive number, it's in the domain. So 13 divided by 12 is roughly 1.083. So this is our solution, right? Uh, since x is equal to 13 over 12 is in the domain, it is a solution. All right, so Let's do just two word problems here, uh, and then I'll let you go for today. How about that? So 
First, I'm going to do 93, and then we're going to finish with 97. Oops. And I put the, the equations that we need here on the side. So I'll bring those in as well. Okay. So we want to know how long will it take for an investment of $1,000 to double in value if the interest rate is 8.5% per year compounded continuously. Okay. So continuously means that we're working with this equation here. So we have A of T is P times E to the RT. The principal amount is the initial investment, which is $1,000. And I want it to double in value, which means I have to have two times 1,000 as my overall T. So I have 2,000 is 1,000 E, and then the rate, right, 8.5%, I have to divide by 100, so I get 0 0.085. T. And I want to know how long is it going to take, so I'm going to solve for T. So to do that, I've got an exponential equation, so I need to move this 1,000 over to the left-hand side. So I get 2,000 divided by 1,000, which is just 2, e to the 0.085 T. So 2 oops, is e to the 0.085 T. Now, to bring this down from the exponent, I have to take the log, and I'm going to use the natural log because I have a base e. ln of 2 is 0 0.085t times the ln of e, which you don't even have to write because it's 1. So I have t must be the ln of 2 divided by 0 0.085. That's hard to communicate. Right, especially if you're kind of trying to tell someone how long it's going to take. Oh, it's the natural log of 2 over 0 0.085. Probably not going to work out. ln of 2 oops, divided by 0 0.085. So it's going to take t is roughly 8.1546727712 years. Or uh, 8.15 years if you want. Yeah. And then the last example I want to do for this chapter is this fish one. Okay. So a small lake is stocked with a certain species of fish. The fish population is modeled by this function. So P is actually P of T. So this should be uh, P of T. But sometimes if T, if it's obvious that T is the variable, we just write P. Um, but if it helps, you can write P of T. Is 10 over 1 plus 4 to the, times E to the negative 0.8T, okay. where P is the number of fish in thousands. Okay. And t is measured in years since the lake was stocked. Find the fish population after three years. So I'm going to let t be three. So what I'm going to do in part a is all I'm finding is p of t. I'll just write out the equation here is 10 divided by 1 plus 4 e to the negative 0.8 t. And I want to find p of 3 is 10 divided by 1 plus 4 e to the negative 0.8 times 3. These are equations that you were able to do on the test, right? So this is from a previous section 4.3. All right, I'm going to simplify. So I'm going to write out all my steps here, but negative 0.8 times 3, uh, negative 0.8 times 3 is negative 2.4. So I get 10 divided by 1 plus 4 times e to the negative 2.4.
e to the power of that is roughly 0 0.0907. So I get 10 divided by 1 plus 4 times 0 0.09. 0717953299. I always write out all my decimal places unless I'm really lazy. Times, whoopsies, uh, times four. 10 divided by one plus 0 0.36287181322. 10 divided by 1.36287, oops, 28718132. Uh, whoopsies, plus one. 10 divided by, keep clearing my calculator instead of um, doing it properly. Roughly, as soon as we started doing approximations, I should have had approximately equal to, but let's not, I won't be too picky. 7.337447222. But remember, the population is in thousands, right? And so thousands of fish after three years. So thousands of fish. So after three years, there are approximately 7,337 fish. <clears throat> Part B after how many years? So now we're solving for T. Will the fish population reach 5,000 fish? Okay. So after how many years will the fish population reach 5,000? Again, the, the units are so important, right? Because it's 5,000, but P is in thousands. So P should be five, right? Otherwise you're gonna get really weird numbers. So B, We'll copy this out again here. So let P of T be five, right? Because it's in thousands and solve for T. So five is 10 divided by, so this is the new stuff that we haven't uh, covered until today. So four, times e to the negative 0.8t, which I'll be able to solve for. Now, I'm gonna move this upstairs to, by multiplying it by five. So I multiply it over five times one plus four e to the negative, whoops, make it look a little bit nicer, negative 0.8t is 10. Uh -huh. I'm trying to isolate my exponential function, so I'm gonna slowly move stuff over, right? Order of operations. And so I get one plus four e to the negative 0.8t is 10 divided by five. So four e to the negative 0.8t is gonna be two minus one. Okay, 10 divided by five is two, then subtract my, uh, one. And so I get e to the negative 0.8t must be one divided by four. Two minus one is one, and then I divide four over. So just kind of doing a couple of things at the same time. To bring this, this power downstairs, I'm gonna take the natural log. Also, because I'm taking the natural log of e, it's gonna to go to one, which is really nice. So I'm gonna take the natural log of e to the negative 0.8t, is the natural log of one over four, which you could rewrite as the negative log of four, but I'm not gonna do that. This brings the power downstairs, so I get negative 0.8t times the log of e, which is just one, is the natural log of one over four.
So I get negative 0.8t is the natural log of 1 over 4. So close. t is the natural, oops, is the natural log of 1 over 4 divided by negative 0.8. Okay, here we go. Uh, the natural log of 1 divided by 4, hopefully it is a negative number, right? And so t is roughly negative 1.3862943619. Divided by negative 0.8. Why did I say hopefully a negative? Well, because time has to be positive, right? And so divided by negative 0.8, t is roughly 1.73286795 years. Oh, all done. I'm going to leave it at that. Right, you could round it if you want to, but um, all right. That's the end of exponents and logs, but we've covered a lot of ground, right? Next week we'll start uh, trig, so trigonometry, so Katoa, all that fun stuff. Radians, degrees might sound familiar, uh, but we'll deal with that next day. All right. I'll stop the recording here.